Right, so good evening everyone and uh, welcome to our module five of our eight uh, module um, master class, if you like, of our personal development. Thank you so much everybody for joining us. We have people here from all over the world, um, different continents, different time zones, and uh, we love, love, love sharing this very special and precious moment with everybody every single week. Um, so what I thought I would do, just start the call very, very briefly for a few minutes, is to recap what we have done so far. Um, some people will watch this on replay and other people have not joined us from day one. So I think it's always useful to just um, recap, you know, uh, very briefly on that. And so really what I felt that um, the, the foundation stone of everything here when we really want to explore our personal development journey and grow uh, ourselves is that we want we, we need to be in a position where we want to change um we we know we are willing to change and even though sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable it might be even a bit scary um you know we we feel that we we can change and uh, we have the will to change so that was really the first step that i wanted to build into this first module and then the next one really was we went into if you remember a little bit more about our limiting beliefs started to identify what our limiting beliefs were around money health relationships um, that kind of thing and we came up some, with some interesting answers through uh, various little personality tests and games and um, and then we really went into you know what I um, think hopefully a couple of you are going to share now a little bit about uh, really going into the stillness uh, going into the quiet relaxation and um, we hear a lot about meditation these days and some people I think don't do it because they feel that they don't know how and uh, or, or it's not for them or you know they, they, they could never do it or whatever it might be so i think the whole process of you know sharing it's not about going into meditation it's just about being still first of all being still physically <laughs> even if it's for 15 minutes in a quiet place with no distractions no phone no uh, nobody else around in a, in a pleasant place um, and then learning how to you know really uh, calm the mind not necessarily, as I said, having this thing, so, you know, I've got to meditate, I've got to meditate, you know, it's the worst thing, isn't it? You know, we then get stressed about trying to be not stressed. And so, um, so I love the whole idea, the very simple idea of just going into a quiet, quiet place and then learning how to just quietly relax, relax the whole muscles in the body. You know, and sometimes I, I, I'm sure that you find the same, you know, when I get to my moment of meditation in the morning, I'll have done a couple of things. So already my mind is starting to go. So I sometimes feel a certain reluctance when I get into the chair to think, oh, you know, how am I going to get into that really deep relaxation state again? And uh, I have found that just by focusing on the relaxation of the body, st I start at my toes and I say my toes are relaxed, my feet are relaxed, my ankles are relaxed. And I just go up through every single part of my body. And then I start really, really relaxing easily into that moment of stillness. So if you're finding it difficult to get into that moment of stillness, try that little exercise. Another one, of course, you know, many of you already know is just to just um, consciously breathe. You cannot consciously breathe and think at the same time, um, which is, you know, interesting, isn't it? Um, but you can't consciously breathe and, and think at the same time. So it's a great way of instantly stilling your thoughts. You'll probably do about three breaths and then the mind will start again going, oh, hang on a minute, I'm still here, I'm still here. Then you have to bring, just gently bring yourself back again to your breaths. You know, one, two, three. And I guarantee I'll try and do 10. I guarantee it takes me three or four goes to do a full number 10 without losing my thoughts again. So again, this is about practice. It's about the mind is a muscle. It's the same as a muscle in the gym. Um, like it's a, it's a habit forming thing. We have to practice it, practice, practice, practice again and again and again to get good. All right. So, you know, any if you're new to this, be patient. But the whole rule is, you know, never miss a day, even if it's just 15 minutes, even if you do nothing else, just 15 minutes of stillness every day is absolutely gold. So that was the next step, you know, after the willingness to change, identifying a few limitations and then getting into the stillness. And then last week we spoke about the definite main purpose statement. And um, it was uh, something that, you know, when I, when I share these ideas, you know, we've, I've done this many, many times and every time I present it, I, I feel I do it a bit better and I understand it better myself. 
you know, and this is why I always say to you at the end of every class, please share whatever, even if it's just one small thing with at least two people. Okay, share what you've learned, share what you're practicing with two people and then get them to start practicing and then ask them to do the same so that we can then go on and start, you know, cha making changes in the world for better one person or two people at a time. We don't have to go into a huge thing and change a thousand lives at a time. It's just actually one or two at a time. That's really what this whole thing is about. You know, we're just a limited bunch of people out on the leading edge, you know, looking for, for, for new horizons, new levels of excellency, new levels of, you know, um, inner peace, new levels of, of wellness and, and so on. And, and, you know, this is our, our goal now is to really expand that, you know, to, you know, one by one, two by two, as much as we can. So having a definite main purpose statement is really the pivotal point of today. But before we go into, you know, some of the thoughts I wanted to share, I really want to open the mic to you guys who have been um, like going into that practice of, you know, the silence and stuff like that. And uh, I think we have a couple of people who would like to share. So I want to hear from you. We want to hear your experiences and, uh, and you know, how, um, you know, how it's working out for you right now. So I think, Kathy, you, you, you've been doing this quite quite seriously. So could you tell us a little bit about your experience and, and what you've benefited from? Yes. Hi. So my name is Kathy Smith and I live in Houston, Texas, and I actually missed the first of these classes, but I have really struggled with willingness to change and Bridget's been very patient, but I found that this very simple instruction of finding a quiet place and not having any distractions for 15 minutes has been incredibly helpful to me. And I found that actually by going and sitting outside very early in the morning before, when, when the air is still, when the world is still, when you can actually hear the trees breathe, I know it sounds weird, but it's just that listening to nature and it sounds crazy, but I don't even want the pool Laris to be on. It's completely still. Everything is just quiet. And that has really, really helped me steady. And Bridget's right. If you breathe, you can't think. So I've really been focusing on my breathing, but it's that absolute stillness of the morning that helps me because even inside, you know, there's just noises that go on. So I really want to say thank you for that. So when you, when you first started doing this, Kathy, you know, was it difficult and has it got easier or what's the progress been on this? Yeah. So the first couple of times was horrific. I'm not going to lie. I, because my mind goes at a hundred miles an hour, my body goes at a hundred miles an hour. And it was, it, it, it actually was, my brain was screaming at me when I was sitting there. I had to really focus on keep bringing my brain back, bringing it back, because that's when the hardest thing is, is when you're used to, but because I had already gone like a train every single morning, it's actually, it took me, I want to say three to four days, but now it's a natural motion. I just go straight outside, straight to that one spot, sit down and just clear and I don't move I don't speak I don't do anything for 15 minutes I have I do have my watch with me to time it because I I need to know that I'm giving myself that permission yeah. as Andy Ellis said it's permission to be still I love it and and so you you this is your first thing in the morning routine now is that right yes okay. yes Actually, I'm sorry, I think it was Beth Dietrich who said, permission to be still, yeah. I love it, so cool. That's right, a permission, well, permission to, um, you know, to, to kind of like uh, love ourselves a little bit more. I, I saw a great question, I think it was just when I was down, going down a scroll hole on Facebook yesterday, and somebody posted, um, write a list of all the things that you love. So... And then underneath it wrote, how long did it take you to write myself? Oh, that's quite interesting. I, I wouldn't probably have thought to put myself. Um, and I think as, as women, you know, we, we once again, you know, to, to give ourselves permission to, to have that special, precious me time um, is really something that we, we can't just, we can't just 
find it, we have to take it. And so, you know, taking that time out is, is so important. Kathy, this is so lovely. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, does anybody else have a, a stillness? Kerry, thank you. Hi, I'm Kerry. I'm outside of Philadelphia. I'm in Paoli, Pennsylvania, and I'm so happy to be here. What, what I'm taking away, it, it's not perfect yet. Um, I have a dog that's by my side all the time, and that's, that's been my challenge because um, she sees me sitting still and she wants to play, so I have to put her somewhere. But that being said, I like the, for me, I like the habit and discipline it's developing in me to take time for me and to take time for me. I do set the timer. That's my time. And um, that's the one thing that struck me is the habit that, that I'm forming or developing. And so what time of the day do you take your... When I wake up in the morning. It's usually um, between 7 and 8 o'clock. Very good. And do you, do you um, try and go to the same place every time? Or I do. Yeah, I had to find a spot that was a little bit more... Um, and I go outside in my sunroom. I'm, my house is quiet at that time. It's, I have grown adult children. It's not like I have little kids. <laughs> You know, sometimes they're quiet. I shouldn't say that, but um, they're home right now because of COVID. But yeah. Um, yeah, I just sit out in my sunroom because it's it's peaceful. It's uh, not too hot yet because it's not air conditioned out there. So I enjoy it. Yes. Thank you, Kerry. Wonderful. Anyone else before we move on? Viv, thank you. Hi. Hello. I'm Vivian Allen. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm Vivian Allen, and I'm from Poole in Dorset. And um, I have been really embracing this practice. I get up early anyway, um, but I have not been sitting in the same place. I have been experimenting with different locations and I can sit easily for 20 minutes. That's not a problem for me. Um, the stillness in the brain, the mental chatter, hmm, haven't sussed that one yet. But uh, I could easily spend 20 minutes. So I think that, you know, I've been meditating for a while, quite often with music or sometimes guided meditations. Um, so for me, the complete silence is the new bit. Um, it's something I've been aspiring to do for a while, but I am still struggling with the mental chatter. And I find it so interesting that I'm trying different locations. I wonder if it's still my body itching to not quite be settled. Um, so yeah, but I have found what's working better though. The last few days is I get up and I do my yoga routine before the meditation that has helped me to settle much better. I think that if you're struggling to find one place, you need to just decide one and do it for 10 days, no matter how uncomfortable. Yeah. And then it will get comfortable in the end. Mm. I like you, uh, for quite a while did my yoga before my meditation. It's very recently that I've been able to swap. Um, but I quite like having it the other way around now uh, because I'm so relaxed and, you know, just sort of calm. I like to get a little bit of that vital energy that, that yoga gives mm -hmm. us, you know, once I've got it, it come out of that. But everybody has their own thing. There's no right or wrong way. Um, but the instructions are, if possible, to be in the same place every day. Mm -hmm. So find the one that you are the most comfortable with or the least uncomfortable <laughs> and, uh, and give it a go for 10 days. Stick it out. See what, mm -hmm. see what happens. Thank you, you for that. You normally you. find after 10 days that, you know, even the excruciatingly uncomfortable becomes less so. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually that leads me on very, very well to... A little bit about what we're going to talk about now thank you thank you Viv uh, so you can see everyone is different everyone has a different process uh, but ultimately um, you know the aim of why we do this is really what we're going to talk about tonight uh, because uh, we need to be able to understand the uh, the reason right we need to sort of like it's not about intellectualizing it but it needs to kind of make sense so so one of the reasons that we uh, get anxious or frustrated or, or feel guilty or angry or whatever it might be, or that we criticize ourselves and we judge and criticize others is because of that 
mental chatter, which um, is, is, is a sort of kind of, you know, interference, if you like, like radio static the whole time. So think of it this way, if you will. We have three lives. We have a public life, which is the one we're in now, where everybody's at this together. We have a private life, which is the life we have at home with our family and intimate ones. And then we have a secret life. And our secret life is what do we think when we don't have to think? Okay. So what does that mean, that secret life? Well, 95% of what we do during the day is an automatic habit. We don't have to consciously think, I'm going to go and brush my teeth. So I'm going to now take the toothbrush. So I'm going to now put the toothpaste on. So I'm going to now brush my teeth. Do you agree? We just do it without even having to think about it. Do you agree? If you go and put the kettle on to make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, you don't have to think, I'm going to go and put the kettle on. I'm going to go and fill it with water. You just do it. It's an automatic habit that is ingrained into your subconscious. You know that you know. So while you're doing all those things that you don't need to think about, which is 95% of our day, what are you thinking? What are we thinking when we don't have to think? About 5% of the day, we're going to intellectually apply our brilliant brains to solving some kind of a problem. And when I say 5%, I'm being generous. Most of the time, Everything we do throughout the day is completely automated and does not require thought. Okay. That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, even when we're having a conversation like tonight, I speak at 60 to 80 words a minute, which is what most people do. We actually think at about 300. So even while you're listening to me or somebody else that's speaking on the call, you actually, most of the time you're having a second conversation in your head. Okay. That little voice, that second conversation, that inner roommate is what is shaping our future. Financially, in terms of our business success, our relationships and our health. Okay. So it's worth the time to take a little bit, of, <laughs> make a little bit of effort to, 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 to really, um, you know, first of all, understand that all manifestation on the physical plane, our health, our wealth, and our happiness is a result of what that voice is saying. And that voice is talking and we are listening to it 95% of the time because 95% of our day, we're just in automation. We don't have to think about what we do. Okay. So the first secret to being able to become a master manifester is to learn how to discipline the mind. Now, the word discipline sort of brings up like, oh, what? discipline? That sounds like really hard and struggling and all the rest of it. It doesn't have to be. But you have to make conscious efforts in order to understand what disciplining of the mind is. And I promise you that what we're talking about here is everything. Once again, it's cause, which is the mind, and effect, which is health, wealth, and happiness. All right? We have to change the cause to get a different effect. We're so busy looking at the outside world. I've got to change that. I've got to change that. No, the only thing that we can change, that we can control, is our secret life. We cannot change people. Anybody who's a parent should know that. We cannot change politics. We cannot change the world. It'll have very, very, very little impact. But we can change within and in which case we have a different result for sure, right? So in the process of visualization and manifestation, the first thing we need, there are two things we're gonna look at is how do we discipline the mind? Okay, there are 12 steps. Now, uh, I was raised a Roman Catholic, but I am not adherent to any particular religion at all. However, I have been uh, interested to read some um, anecdotal illustrations from the Bible, which is basically, you know, the description of all psychological drama in human history. <laughs> and 
In fact, when you look at the 12 disciples, you realize it is the 12 disciplines of the mind that are required to become an elevated person. Okay, that's what the 12 disciples were. So I'm going to go into that in a little bit. But the first thing we're going to do is tag on to this silence that you are now practicing, the definite main purpose of your life, and how to then start manifesting it, first of all, in the top and the bottom of the day, and then how you're going to maintain that through the discipline of the mind throughout the day. All right? That's the interesting bit, the bit in the middle, in between the nice bit in the trees and by the pool and the bit before you go to bed. <laughs> What's happening in the other 17 hours? <laughs> okay? So first of all, you're learning how to relax and to really quiet the mind. Okay? So now what we're going to do is go into that silence again every morning, but this time, we quiet the mind, we quiet the mind, we quiet the mind. I'm going to give you another couple of new techniques as well. Just stillness, coming still. You can sometimes, I say to myself, just relax. Just relax. Just relax. There's something else you can do to really, really get into a very relaxed, almost floating state. Is just repeat over and over, I am. Not I am something, but I am. Okay? the breathing, whatever it might be, use the technique, master it, and learn how to just empty the mind so you feel completely relaxed and as much as possible, the mental chatter is calm. When you get to that point, you are then going to begin to imagine your chi definite main purpose. You're going to bring the image into that relaxed and open. On the first day, not a lot will happen. You'll be able to probably focus on it for a second or two, and it won't be very clear. But as you keep practicing this, that vision will become more and more clear, multidimensional, more colored. You'll be able to see it, feel it, touch it, hear it, smell it, taste it. Everything will become completely real to you. To a point where once you open your eyes and you look around you, you'll be astonished that this is the real world and not the one that you've seen in your head. Okay. This is an extraordinary adventure and I promise you it works. All right. So I'm talking to you under the premise that every single one of you know your one definite chi main purpose. You've got to choose just one. If you choose more than one, you have, it's like chasing two rabbits, okay? You're going to choose, you choose that one or that one or that one. You've got to choose just one thing, just one thing, okay? It can be something to do with your health. It can be something to do with your relationships. It can be something to do with your business, your success. You just have to choose one thing, okay? And you're going to build up an image around that chief, definite main purpose that you have so that you can literally feel that you are living within it. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple of tips of how you can start doing that. Um, some people say that they don't know how to visualize, okay? I'm afraid I will have to beg to differ because my bet is, is everybody closes their eyes and I say visualize the color red, you can all do that. Do you agree? If I ask you to visualize the face of your best friend, you can all do that. Just try it for a second. Close your eyes and think of your best friend's face. Everybody can do that, right? It's really easy. Okay? So the only difference between the people who do this well and the people who find it a struggle is the level of development. All of us need to know and walk confidently through the day that we all are 100% equal in our power and our capacity to use the imagination. 
Nobody is better than anyone else. We are born, it is our birthright, it is our divine right, and we are all equal in our capacity to use the imagination. There are some mystics that go as far as to say that our imagination is God, or it is a proof of God, because we are the only creatures in this planet who can imagine. So you need to know that if you can only imagine the color red or the face of your best friend and you can't get it beyond that, it's just because the level of development is still in the early stages. But we all have equal capacity. It's nothing to do with intelligence, with education, with parents, with where you were brought up. Zero. OK, now this is very liberating because it suddenly means what? I don't have to compare myself to anyone else. I don't have to think, why are they going faster than me? You just have to know that they're just at a slightly different level of development. And all development requires, as you know, is practice. That's it. And believe me, what I'm teaching you is not rocket science. It is not a struggle. You see, a lot of people here on this call are my business partners. And we talk about the struggle is real. Right? I refute that categorically. Life is not, should never be a struggle or hard. We were not put on this planet to struggle. We were put on this planet to have fun. We were put on this planet in the middle of this amazing nature and abundance and beauty to enjoy it. Right? Do you agree? Does that make more sense than to come here to suffer and find it difficult and hard and bleh, right? I refute categorically that we're on this planet to suffer. I claim, I reclaim it is our birthright to have, to do, and to be absolutely anything we want. Okay. As long as, of course, it is aligned with universal laws of truth, which are honesty, love, peace, justice, and so on. So let's take out the idea that this is hard. It is one of the easiest things to do. You just have to learn it. But literally, guess what? A three-year-old does this easily every single day. Do you agree? Do you agree three-year-olds know how to imagine things? Do you read they go off into their own world? Then what happens to it within the education system? Imagining? Don't be ridiculous. You've got to get your stats. No more imagination. Get your focus on. Focus on your, on your fractions. And as soon as a child gets to 10, every single drop of his imagination, or for the most part, is squashed out of his brain. Because they are pigeonholed into, sorry, I'm not going to stand on my soapbox here, but they are pigeonholed into a situation, nobody's fault, not blaming anyone. But for the most part, this is what education does. It kills imagination. And yet we know that we're all born with it. Because we see little two and three year olds and they have imaginary friends and they imagine the fairies and the little, you know, they do that. We all did that, right? Okay? And we have forgotten how to use our imagination. And this is our superpower. And I'm going to teach you how to use it. And give you a couple of examples of how I've used it with miraculous results. Super simple. Okay? Just this week. Right? So, in order to use the imagination, in order to remember, in order to re-exercise that muscle of the imagination, you have to learn how to still your mind first and foremost. All right, because otherwise it's like radio static. You turn the radio on and you just hear shh, because the mental chatter is completely blocking out your imagination. All right, get the silence, get relaxing, and then bring into your brain the imagination of your definite main purpose statement. Okay, it is this date. I'm so happy and grateful. I am the two most powerful words. I am, I am, I am so grateful that I am now living the life of my dreams on the beach in the Bahamas, drinking a pina colada every day. I am, I am, I am. Okay, it's very, very powerful. And if you use those two words all the time, I am, you are reprogramming your subconscious mind. Okay, so in the beginning, to cultivate the imagination, it needs a helping hand. And this is how you do it. I am, get calm. Okay, 
If you're still not clear on what your main definite purpose is, go back into the silence again and ask for help. Okay, just before you start, just sit cross-legged or on your chair, whatever, and say, okay, well, I'm looking for a bit of clarity. I would like to know what my definite chief aim would be for the next year. And just do that for a few days and the answer will come. have to own the hard work and then of course everything else will come to support that definite chief aim family and health if it's business family and health here to support it if it's your health your family and your business will support it you grow whatever your priority is right now okay it's not putting everything else to the side where you're just focusing on that one thing you just align everything to support that one definite main purpose all right does that make sense you know if it's a business and you're going to have to be a little bit or distant from your family, you sit down and you say, hey, this is what I'm doing, will you support me? I'm not asking you to do it, but you know, I need your support. Whatever is necessary in order to, to align everything behind your definite main purpose, all right? So, so this is the first thing, go into the silence with your idea, sit, stillness, bring the visualization in. And every day you go back to that image it will become clearer and clearer and clearer. So I'm gonna give you a little example of one fun one and one meaningful one, okay? The other one could be meaningful as well. So, so I have a, a business partner called Tasman. She was on last week and um, we have a little joke about our gene size, right? Because we're always dreaming of being, you know, the perfect. <laughs> So, so when she was on a call the other day, she stood up and she had these really cool little shorts on. And I was like, I want to get into those shorts. Okay. And I said, what size did you buy? She said, I bought a size eight, which is in America, a size four. And I said, oh, I'm going to get into a size eight, no matter what, you know, thinking I'm a 10, 12, right? So the last 10 days I went around saying, I am a perfect size eight. I am a perfect size eight. So I ordered the size nine. I'm thinking, well, okay, another few weeks and I'll be into them. I put them on today and they fitted. So I have basically lost almost a gene size in 10 days by just going around going, I'm a perfect size eight. I'm a perfect size eight. And I have noticed, I have noticed that my appetite changed. I wasn't craving as much food. I have more energy. I haven't dieted and I haven't ex barely exercised. Right? No struggle. Right? How much easier is that, right? <laughs> because I've always known, and we already know, that people can self-heal with the power of the mind. So why shouldn't you be able to lose weight by using the power of the mind? And the proof is, I've done it. Okay? Now, we haven't finished yet, because I still haven't. So I said to her, right, now I need, <laughs> basically need a size six. <laughs> this is way too easy, right? No. And then having fun along the way with it. Okay? So that's the fun thing. Uh, now I'm going to go into an experimental uh, process of building muscle, of changing my skin tone, uh, of thickening my hair. You know, of course, we always use products and so on to support that, but, you know, and, and superfoods and all the rest of it. And what I found is a real craving for more superfoods, more healthy foods and everything. I'm just like really craving them. So, of course, as I'm programming my subconscious mind to a thinner body, it's craving things that will support this programming of my subconscious mind. Does that make sense? Okay. It's not just like leaving one side and this is just doing that. So, so basically you have to attach the subconscious mind to a mechanism. And when you reach out, program the subconscious mind, it will naturally attach itself to what it needs to be able to support your program. And that's exactly what's happening. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, I go through a process which is called um, revision imagination. Uh, it's something I've just discovered and uh, don't, don't try and find out too much about it. Let me just give you an example of something very simple. So um, some of you know my backstory and uh, five years I was separated from my daughter and I got her back, she was 12 and uh, it's been five years of ups and downs, okay? She has health issues and um, clearly after having, you know, gone through a, an abduction at the age of seven, she probably could do with some help. I mean, she's brilliant academically, 
Um, but you know, I, I really wanted her to, before she goes to university next year, get some therapy just to, you know, sort of set her on the right track and also to deal with her health problem, which she has categorically refused to even discuss for five years, right? Blank. And then during the lockdown, just to add, you know, make things even worse, um, a child that we never argue, we always find, I said something that triggered her so badly, she didn't speak to me for two weeks. I, it was rare, she didn't even see her for like about 10 days, okay? She would get up when I was asleep and vice versa to avoid me. It was really hard. So you're talking like things are not great, okay? And this is normally a really easygoing kid, um, but she needs help. And I was just so desperate. In fact, I spoke to Viv about it uh, on one of our, on our lovely walk that we had a couple of weeks ago. So, so I thought to myself, okay, so I've been looking, who can I ask? What can I do? Blah, 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 blah. You know, asking myself, how can I find someone who's always looking at the outside response? So I thought, this is not working after five years, <laughs> banging my head against the wall. I'm thinking that the clock is ticking. She's going to leave home in a year. Something has to change. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to do something else. I had an imaginary conversation with her last week in my head saying, hey, um, you know, I've, I've spoken to um, a trusted friend of mine and um, I was just wondering if you'd be open to, you know, having some therapy and maybe going through sort of maybe a medicalized program with, you know, with your, your health challenges and so on. And I had this conversation in my head with her and she replied by saying, um, yeah, sure, why not? That would be absolutely fine. I mean, this bear in mind, this is five years of complete blank. Two days ago, we had that conversation and she said yes. I mean, this is, this works, guys, okay? So start with the end in mind if you want to, you know, get into something wants to change in your life, all right? Have that conversation. This is really powerful, all right? And this is what you're going to do in your visualization process. It's not about asking constantly to get, in, to get something. So if you keep begging, you know, you know, do not do vain repetitions of begging, Okay, what you want to do is live in the actual physical consciousness of already possessing, possessing what you want. Okay, and this is what this visualization is. It's not about wanting it. It's about already having it. There is a process. If you want to go on holiday, for example, okay, if you want to go to a, an exotic place, okay, what you're going to do in this visualization process after relaxation is close your eyes and see yourself sitting in the sand with the drink, the sound of the waves, you know, by the pool, wherever you are on the top of a mountain, it doesn't matter, just see yourself there every day, every day, every day, do it for oh, at least eight days, but you know, as long as it takes for it to manifest, okay? If this is your definite purpose statement is to go to this place. Remember only one thing, okay? and just keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it, you know, smell the sea air, you know, touch, get the sand to run through your fingers, whatever it might be, if this is your definite main purpose, choose one place and live in it in your mind consistently every single day in that moment of second, okay? All right. Now, I have been through a visualization process with the weight loss a year and a half ago when I actually lost like, I don't know, 10 kilo or something in, in two months. It was insane. So I know that this has already worked. All right. So I do, I already have quite a lot of practice in this domain, but it doesn't matter what level you're at, just get started with this practice and you can teach anyone to do it. Be silent, have a definite purpose, use that definite purpose statement every single day in the morning. Okay. Now, the next most important thing is to do it again in the evening, just before you go to sleep. Okay. Yes, Kelly. Where is she? Hi, Bridget. Um, just quickly with that, if um, the definite purpose is a monetary value, how would you um, visualize that? Would you visualize receiving that money or is there a different oh. way of visualizing it? Very difficult to visualize money. Yeah. Okay. In fact, it's almost impossible. What you're going to visualize is the one main thing you're going to do with that money. Okay. Perfect. That makes sense. Okay. Thank a you. A trip, a house, a car whatever it might be. Okay? Lovely, thank you. Right, don't try and visualize money. If it's a, you know, a promotion, 
in a job or whatever it might be, imagining yourself receiving that promotion, you know that there is a monetary value behind it. All right. Okay, so what we have discovered is the first 20 minutes when you wake up, subconscious mind, like a sponge. And just before you go to bed, I've been doing some research on this week, it's even more powerful. Ah! So as you get into a sleepy state, okay, you do, I suggest you either do this in a chair next to your bed or sitting on your bed if it's not practical or at least somewhere where you feel completely relaxed. Okay, same process as the morning. Right, go relax really, really deep. Bring in your definite purpose through a visualization. Okay, use the I am. Breathe deep and see it materialize in your mind as if you possess it. The key hit thing is if you are, you must feel as if you are there and you are in it. It is the feeling. So it's not just about thinking about the thing, it's the feeling that you have it because the thought is the thing and the feeling is the vibration which is the creator. Okay, otherwise you're just gonna do it over and over and over again. If you don't put feeling into it, you don't actually feel it, you're actually in it, then this won't work. And again, if this is something new to you, it's something you're gonna build up and, and develop. All right, uh, Viv, you had a question. Um, does it work if you have a recording of your voice and listen to that? I would say do it as well. You know, the more powerful you get in, in doing what I've just described, the better. And, and I'll explain why in a minute, it'll make more, more sense to you. Okay, so repetition morning and evening. Just allow 15 minutes, you know, just to go into the silence, do the visualization. If you hold a vision for 68 seconds, it actually sets the whole thing into, into motion. It's been uh, scientifically proved uh, by measuring brain waves and that kind of thing. Because a brain wave is a thing exactly the same as the light that comes from an electric uh, light bulb or, 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 or an object. You know, everything we see and touch is just liquid light that is crystallized just atoms that have crystallized. Do you agree? Whether it's our body or whether it's my lip brush or whether it's my piece of paper, it's just crystallized atoms. That's what we live in a world of crystallized atoms, okay? And thought is also a form of atomic energy, right? And that thought pattern, once it has got the vibration of feeling to it, will attach it to the thing that you are now living in, all right? All right, so, you don't need to understand how this works. You just need to know it does, really does work, okay? It really does work. So morning and evening. Now, that's the easy bit. The tricky bit where most people will fall down, well, in fact, there's two areas. The first thing is, is that when they've had their ugh, meditation, yoga, visualization, glass of water, feeling on top of the world, get a bad phone call. What happens to you then? <laughs> Get a rejection. Get a rude comment from somebody on Facebook. Get a, a backlash from a, your partner and your husband or whatever. Okay, you're completely knocked off center, aren't you? Okay. Because it would all be very well if you would just do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening, and it did not matter what happened in the other 14 hours. Unfortunately, it does. <laughs> Isn't that surprising, right? Of course, it's always better than nothing to do your 15 minutes, even if you're in the worst state possible for the rest of the 14 hours. But clearly you don't wanna do that because once again, I refute categorically that life should be a struggle. Life should be fun, okay? And it's supposed to be fun all the time, not just for twice a day for 15 minutes, okay? It is our birthright that we should always be happy Peaceful, energized, healthy, loved, and in harmony with life. That is why we're here on this planet. Okay. So the next thing is, is to train oneself through the discipline of the mind to maintain this level of consciousness throughout the day. 
no matter what happens. No matter what anyone says, no matter what anybody does, to maintain this high level of consciousness of the thing that we desire throughout the day. Now, if you remember in the beginning, I said 95% of everything we do during the day is automatic and we don't have to think about it. So what are we thinking when we don't have to think? This is where you have to train your brain when you are in a position where you don't have to think to only think about your definite purpose. All the time, all day. See it, feel it, smell it, touch it, taste it, be there, be, feel, feel the thrill of it, okay? Feel the energy it gives you. Feel yourself going, we did it, okay? You can be in this state all day because just remember 95% of the day you don't need to use your brain for anything else. You really don't. Okay? 95% we do is automatic. We never have to use our brain. So use your brain at that point. We all know it's scientifically proven that we only use about 5% to 10% of our brain. So wouldn't you like to use all of it? Okay? Either what a waste. Okay. What you need to understand is what we're discussing here puts you out on the leading edge of the 1% of the 1%. Okay. This is the 1% of the 1%. All right? So what we have to do now through the 12 disciplines is learn how to discipline our mind when we don't have to think, but we're still thinking anyway. Because if we don't discipline our thoughts when we don't have to think, guess what? Our thoughts control us, and 80% of them are negative. Oh. All right. So the first thing is we've got to be really, really careful of what we allow ourselves to hear. What people say to us, what we listen to on the radio or the television. Okay, we have to block out anybody who is negative, who puts you down, any news you hear is negative, cut it out of your life. Do not accept it. Do not accept it. And if they are, people are being like that to you, it's because you accept it. Act as if you chose that, right? And then suddenly you take full responsibility. You can't blame anybody for people speaking to you badly. I don't care who they are. You walk away and you do not accept it. You are much better than that. Cut it off. Nobody deserves to speak to you badly because you don't speak to anybody badly, right? Now, if you do, you need to stop it because then you'll just get back what you give out. So that's the first discipline. Only allow helpful words and thoughts to enter your consciousness. I discipline what I hear. And if you do hear negative things, you just, you, you just, la, 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 you're not hearing it. You're not hearing it, right? Second thing is courage. As you discipline what you hear, you will be courageous. You will develop courage. Okay? You will start to dare more. You will start to do more. You will be more silent in your mind because you are courageous, you have posture and you have poise and confidence, okay? Courage is confidence and poise. All right, the third thing is always love people. You don't have to like everyone, but you must always love one, people. It's called disciplined judgment. People are all dealing with their own shit. You agree? Please don't think it's just you. Never judge. Never judge anyone. Okay. The next thing is linked to judgment, which is forgiveness. Okay. Never criticize other people in your thought or in your word. Ever. Ever. And I don't care who they are or what they've done. Nobody has the right to cast the first stone. Okay. None of us are, you know, the last time I looked, none of us are angels, right? We've all done stuff. Never criticize, always love, all right? Really important. And of course, that means ourselves as well as everyone else, right? So we treat ourselves and everyone else equals. The sixth thing is what we've been talking about is imagination, which is the distinction which will distinguish you above the masses. Okay? Every scientist, every artist, every inventor, every writer, every businessman and every businesswoman have used the power of the imagination. It is the difference between being a leader or a follower. 
So what I like to hear is a leader or a leaner. Are you a leader or a leaner? Okay. The seventh one is you must be totally indifferent to any suggestions to your life than apart from what you desire. You must deny all doubt, all sickness and all poverty. Poverty normally being hard up or lack or lack. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. There is no lack. There is no doubt. There's only certainty and there's only success in my life. And you have to hold that level of conscious perm consciousness firmly through the discipline of the mind. The eighth one is that uh, what we call the gift of our desires. It, everything, anything we desire, the universe is also desire. It's because the universe de desires it for us. God, if you like, desires it for us. Any of our desires are divine expressions of the universe. So, you know, during the week I was thinking about my definite purpose and I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm asking a bit too much. You know, we have those conversations with ourselves, don't we, right? I was just suddenly like, if I have this desire, if I have this urge, if I have this burning, burning, ardent desire to achieve this definite purpose statement, it is because that's what the universe wants for me. Know that what you want is a gift. Your urge is a gift. The ninth thing is discernment. Never be affected by outside appearances. Never be affected by, you know, what you see. Even if it means that sometimes people might feel you a little bit heartless. Okay? Don't get sucked into other people's drama. Ever. It's not your drama. Stay in your own lane. Stop looking at what other people are doing or what's happening to them. It doesn't mean to say we don't love them, we don't care. Just don't get sucked into their drama. Okay? The tenth thing is praise and gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Always be really thankful for the things that you have not yet seen in reality, but you hold within your heart and your imagination and your burning desire. Thank you for my X, Y, Z, as if you already hold it in your hand. Okay. It's not just about being thankful for what we have, it's especially being thankful for having already received what we have just in our imagination for the moment. Right? It will attach and it will increase the vibration of the feeling that we have that we have already received it. The eleventh thing is only being capable of hearing good news. I decide through the discipline of my mind that whatever I hear is only ever good news. Okay? Unaffected and oblivious to bad news. Again, don't get sucked into the drama. Okay? And the third, the twelfth thing is about giving up your old self. You cannot be who you are today and achieve a different future. You have to be willing to change. Let go of who you think you are. Tony Robbins calls it about being in love with our with our uh, problems, you know. So here's a, here's a little exercise. I actually shared this with Kathy, I think, earlier in the week. I said, suddenly, like, how would you feel right now, this moment, right now, this second? Don't overthink it. If I said, you are completely free. Of everything that has worried or disturbed or, or upset or anything, you're completely free of all that. It's almost a little bit disturbing, isn't it? Almost a little bit disorienting, okay? Because we're so, it's, it's like Stockholm Syndrome, right? You, the, the person, you know, the captive falls in love with her captor. You can either choose to stay in prison or you can set yourself free. And this is how you set yourself free through the 12 disciplines of the mind that you have to train yourself to do throughout the day. And as you learn how to discipline your mind more and more in that 95% of time when you don't need to use your brain, you will start having a clearer and clearer vision in your mind about what your burning desire, about your definite purpose. And you will then be able to connect that with a feeling of absolute certainty of confidence that you are in the process of attaining.
Now, the timeline when you will attain it, unfortunately, I, I can't give you that. Sometimes it will be instant and sometimes it might take a year. You will attain it in the space of time that you believe from your own limited uh, perceptions that you believe you can. Okay, and everybody will set their own timeline. Now, we know that this is possible because in our industry, for example, there are people who have achieved things in eight and a half hours that others have taken 15 years to do. So, you know, we, we, we know that there's no timeline. It's, the timeline is just in the head. And the last time I looked, everybody, in, every single person in that, in, that, in that category had, you know, had two hands, two feet, a brain, eyes, and said the same faculties, the same senses. So what is the only difference that can be between each person? It is the development of their own capacity, their own cause, their own imagination. It's the only difference. Okay. So this is where you're gonna be out on the leading edge and become those master, master, but by maintaining that level of full consciousness through the 12 disciplines of the mind throughout the day, okay? And bookending every single time. I think that's it. That's the practice of the week. All right. Um, Bridget. Yes. Will you be posting those 12 um, on the group? I can do. Yes, absolutely. Thank and, you. And, and, you know, just actually, this is, these are all, um, again, from the 12 disciples, and it is biblical references, and each one of those personality uh, characters is associated with one of the personalities mm -hmm. of, the, of the disciples. And this is what they were designed to be. Well, they weren't just like fancy figures. They were actually behind that, you know, the principles of a disciplined mind. Okay. So... We've covered quite a lot. Be still in the conviction. Uh, okay, okay. Because your groups are. Yeah, yes, of course, carry on. Are you not in the group? Okay, well. Of course, I'll yeah, sort that out for you, no problem. So, as we learn how to discipline our mind, we avoid the pitfall that 99% of people will do. Because you know, how many times on YouTube says, you know, learn how to be a master manifester, oh, right? What happens is, is that in between the time that we start, we've got our definite purpose, we start the practices, we will become consistent and regular and everything. Between the time that we start that and the time of the manifestation, people lose patience. Right, they lose that level of consciousness, whether it be throughout the day or you know, says, Oh my god, I've been doing this for six months now, it's still not working. Okay, it's only because we must need to maintain this higher, 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 higher level of consciousness through the 12 disciplines of the mind. Okay, so go and reclaim your birthright, be in that peak state that Tony Robbins talks about. Do this through the 12 disciplines of the mind. Continue your morning and evening practices. Have absolute clarity on your what main definite purpose is. And I promise you, this stuff works. Okay, everyone. So I look forward to hearing your testimonials next week. And uh, please, you know, come to the call with something prepared if you can. It would be absolutely wonderful to really share your experiences. Hi, Adele. Uh, and, Hi, Bridget. Hi, and uh, you know we're going to really, um, you know, become a bit more interactive in the in the in the last um, three courses because this is now really the the, the, the pinnacle or the, the turning point of, of what we're going to go into deeply for the rest oh, for the rest of the three um, the three modules really. Okay. I hope you found it useful and I'm wishing you a fantastic uh, beginning of July. Here we are already. Um, it's summertime and, uh, and it's been a, a wonderful thrill and gift to spend this hour with you again on this Tuesday night. So take care, everybody, and see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you, Bridget. Fantastic.